I wonder if it's ever struck you how curious a thing it is that most of the things that we experience we regard as things that happen to us which we ourselves do not originate which are events expressing some sort of power or activity that is external to ourselves and if you consider that you realize that what you mean by yourself is rather narrowly circumscribed even events that go on in our own bodies are put in the category of things that happen to us in the same way as things that go on in the world outside our skins if there's a thunderstorm or an earthquake well it happens to you. you're not responsible for it but so in the same way when you have hiccups you didn't plan on it if you have belly rumbles you had no intention of doing it and as to the catastrophic act of getting born well you had nothing to do with that and you can spend all your life blaming your parents for putting you in the situation in which you find yourself and this uh, way of looking at the world in this sort of passive mood as something that happens to you goes right down to our general feeling about life it goes down to the way in which as Westerners we have been accustomed to look at human existence as a precarious event in other words if you're reared with a 20th century or a, shall we say an early 20th century common sense which is based on the philosophy of science of the 19th century with its rejection of Christianity and Judaism uh, you regard yourself as an accident a biological accident in a stupid universe which is mechanical but has no feelings no finer feelings a vast pointless gyration of radioactive rocks and gas in which uh, you happen to occur of course if you don't have that point of view and you are more traditional you look upon yourself as a child of God and therefore under authority in other words there's a big boss on top of all this who allowed you at his pleasure to deign to have the disgusting effrontery to exist and uh, when you look at the world in that image or in the other image that it's a stupid mechanism e either point of view you take uh, you don't really belong you are not really part of all this and I could use a stronger word than part only we don't have it in English we have to say something like um, connected with it essential to it uh, or to put it in the strongest possible way it is quite alien to Western thought to conceive that the external world which is defined as something that happens to you and your body itself as something that you got caught up with it is quite alien to our thought to consider all that as you yourself because you see we have such a myopic view of what one's self is it's as if in other words we selected how much experience is really to be regarded as me as if you focused your attention on certain restricted areas of the whole panorama of things that you experience and say I will take sides with that much of it now we come here right at the start to an extremely important principle the different points of view you get when you change your level of magnification that is to say you can look at something with a microscope and see it a certain way you can look at it with a naked eye and see it in a certain way you look at it with a telescope and you see it in another way now which level of magnification is the correct one well obviously uh, they're all correct but they're just different points of view you can for example look at a newspaper photograph under a magnifying glass and where with the naked eye you will see a human face with the magnifying glass you will just see a profusion of dots rather meaninglessly scattered but as you stand away from that connection of dots which all seem to be separate 
and apart from each other, they suddenly arrange themselves into a pattern. And you see that these individual dots add up to some kind of sense. Now you'll see at once from this illustration that maybe you, when you take a myopic view of yourself, as most of us do, but you may add up to some kind of sense that is not apparent to you in your ordinary consciousness. When we examine our bloodstreams under a microscope, we see there's one hell of a fight going on. All sorts of microorganisms are chewing each other up. And if we got overly fascinated with our view of our own bloodstreams in the, mi in the microscope, we should start taking sides, which would be fatal, because the health of our organism depends on the continuance of this battle. What is, in other words, conflict at one level of magnification is harmony at a higher level. Now, could it possibly be, therefore, that we, with all our problems, conflicts, neuroses, sicknesses, political outrages, wars, tortures, and everything that goes on in human life are a state of conflict which can be seen in a larger perspective as a, an, as a situation of harmony. Well, it is claimed, you see, that some human beings have broken through to that vision, that they've slipped somehow or other into states of consciousness where they see the apparent disintegration and disorganization of everyday life as the functioning of a totality which at its level is completely harmonious. What this insight depended upon was your overcoming the illusion that space separates things. That is to say, the space, the interval between your body and mine, the uh, interval created by birth at one end and death at the other, and then after somebody's death, then somebody else's birth. These are events with intervals between them. And normally we regard these intervals in time and these intervals in space as having no importance, no function. We tend to see the universe itself as really consisting in all the stars and galaxies. That's what it is. That's what we notice. But the space in which all this happens is sort of written off as something that isn't really there. But uh, what one has to realize is that the space is an essential function of the things in the space. After all, you can't have separate stars unless there is a space around them. Eliminate the space and you will see you couldn't have this phenomenon at all. And vice versa. You couldn't have the space. They wouldn't be there in any sense whatsoever if there weren't the bodies in it. So the bodies in the space and the space are two aspects of a single continuum. They're related together in exactly the same way as a back and a front. And you just don't get one without the other. So the moment you see that intervals, that space is connective, you can understand life is a pattern of immense complexity. And what you call yourself as a living organism, say, I am my whole body at the very least. Now what is that body? That body is recognizable, and I recognize my friends when I meet them again with luck, and you recognize me. Uh, although the last time any of you saw me, I was absolutely something entirely different from what I am now. Just as the flame of a candle is never a constant. A flame of a candle is a stream of hot gas. Only you say the flame of the candle as if it were a constant. Well, it is a recognizably constant pattern, but in exactly the same way, we are all constant patterns. And that's all we are. The only thing constant about us at all is the doing rather than the being. It's the way we behave, the way we dance. Only there's no we that dances. There's just the dancing of the energy of the whole universe. Because life is basically a game of hide and seek.